Hello and welcome to Rose Spins a Yarn. Happy summer! Yesterday was the summer solstice so, solstice. so this is the first full day of summer. It's only in the 60s here today so you know it was 90 on Monday you know this weather anyway. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? I want to show you my shawl progress. I really was hoping to be finished for you today and even though I've kept my promise uh, by and large of doing one 12 row repeat every day it seems that I'm just never going to run out of yarn. Um, either I play yarn chicken and don't have enough or it seems to go on forever. So my shawl is getting rather large and I don't know if you could see let me see if I could do it corner to corner. It's kind of hard because look at that. It's getting very big. Very big. So, but see, look at all the, I still have a nice ball. Last time I weighed it, it was three ounces. So, and I only started with seven and a half. It just keeps going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. So hopefully next week, I will have that finished and maybe blocked. Uh, I don't know how many repeats I'm going to finish getting. The pattern originally called for 19 and I'm at 17 and I still have probably two and a half ounces of yarn so we'll see. So today I want to show you some new stuff we got in this shop and some new stuff I dyed. Um, I kind of, uh, as you can see from my fingers, even after four days they're still black. Um, I did a bunch of dyeing this past week and I want to show you some of it. So let me just show you some of the new stuff that I did not dye that I got in the shop this week. Last week actually. So uh, first one up is a, a, a and this, this I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the comment section, I mean in the description of my video so you can see this online. Um, so the first one is called Sea Nymph. And it is a really, really gorgeous green with blue and some red. And it's 85% merino and 15% angelina. And I just think it's scrumptious. I have not spun any of this stuff yet. So the next one is called All That Glitters is a Unicorn. And it is some really pretty pastels, purples, pinks, mints, blues, and 85% merino, 15% sparkle as well. The next one, I should have put them closer, is called Somewhere Dreams Do Come True. Okay, and this is just like a rainbow of beautiful deep colors and again 85% merino, 15% uh, Angelina Sparkle. So those are three new braids with sparkle in it. And this one, this isn't new, this is back in stock uh, by popular demand. Uh, it's called Sea Glass and it is 70% merino and 30% tussa silk. And this is beautiful, blues and greens. And I mean, this is one of my favorite ones and it normally sells out quickly once I get it in, so. Okay. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is Sorry Silk in Roving that I got in. I had some of these colors in a couple of months ago but I just put them up online so I'd like to show them to you. So there's four colors I have and it's pretty cool because it comes in roving form so you could either spin it by itself without having to do any prep to it or you can then blend it into bats or roll eggs or whatever. So I'm going to show you a combination of what we've done here. So here's the four colors that come in braids as roving. This is the turquoise so there's a turquoise stripe and a whole bunch of colors. Really, really pretty. And the fuchsia blend, which is a pink stripe and a whole bunch of colors. All colors, which is a whole bunch of colors and uh, it has kind of a purpley base, but it's all mixed up. There's like no stripe like there is in the pink or turquoise. And then this is a whole bunch of colors as well, but it's much more muted. It's kind of like with a gray base. So really, really cool, really fun to spin. So I spun the turquoise one in 
I just did it, it's, it's a DK-ish weight. And I spun it uh, on itself, so a two ply. Um, I think it is a really, really, came out really cool. Really, really fun to spin. And um, you're never gonna get this like as smooth as you would regular silk or wool, but you can get it pretty smooth. Uh, if you know if you draft properly so you can make it funky and rustic looking or you can make it pretty smooth I went for kind of like spontaneous let it do what it wanted and it came out pretty smooth so uh, this would be great for fingerless mitts or if you spun enough for a shawl or a scarf or a cow don't know what I want to do with this yet um, uh, but I definitely want to spin more it was a lot of fun now if you take some and you mix it into a bat I did that and this is called Pink Crush and it has 35% um, baby alpaca from a girl named Esther, 30% of the sari silk and I did that in the fuchsia one, this one, and 30% merino and a little bit of sparkle. So I think that's cool. Um, you know, it adds some nice texture and interest into a bat, gives pops of color depending on how much you blend in, but you know, a lot of fun to spin. Um, you know, not too crazy textured, it's not like silk noil, but it is a cool way to add some color into a bat. So there's some new sari silk. Now let's get to the stuff that I dyed this past week. So the first thing I'm going to show you, and there's only two of them. Um, the only did two of them and this is the first time I've used Rambouillet to dye. I've spun Rambouillet from raw fiber and I really like Rambouillet. It's very smushy and squishy and mm-hmm but I've never dyed Rambouillet top before. You know I'm usually a merino or alpaca girl and uh, I have to tell you, it's my new favorite fiber to dye. It's so squishy and fun and it feels so awesome. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing a lot more rambling. So these two braids, funky colors, let's zoom out a little bit. This is called, and this is on Rambouillet, this is called County Fair. I only have two of those. You know, a whole bunch of crazy colors. So that's one thing I dyed. The second one, this one is done on 21 micron merino. This is called, and I have like eight or 10 of these or six, six or eight of these, I don't remember. Um, this is called Summer Berry Patch. So, you know, I wanted to do some summery things, at least summery themed, even if the colors aren't necessarily all summer colors. But you know, I belong to a CSA, which is right down the road from my farm. And we've been getting strawberries and blueberries and raspberries and blackberries. And, uh, and let me tell you, Jersey produce is awesome. Anyway, <laughs> if you don't live here, um, you know, the summer in New Jersey with all the produce, it's just so awesome. Um, so I did this with a bunch of, uh, bunch of berries in mind, right? So I've got some blueberries and some blackberries and some strawberries and all that stuff. So, okay, maybe not blackberries, but purple, purpley stuff. And, uh, you know, and a little bit of chartreuse for the foliage. So there's about six, six or eight of those up in the shop. And I'll put the link in the description of the video so that you guys could look at these or possibly purchase them if you'd like. Now here is, uh, oh, I did a lot of this. This is going to be my official Tour de Fleece colorway for 2018. And we're going to talk about Tour de Fleece in a minute. But this is the official colorway for Tour de Fleece. So this is a limited edition, never to be repeated after the the, the sales of what's up there and any pre-orders are done. I won't be repeating this. It's a repeatable colorway, but I won't be repeating this. It's a limited edition. Um, once and done. And this is called Summer Days. So it's got eight different colors, which is a lot for a single braid. Um, and, uh, you know, usually I do four I have one called Unicorn Dreams that is six, um, but 
you know, this is a kind of a new technique for me. There's white space and I don't normally leave white space on anything. So, um, you know, this has blues and purples and oranges and greens and it is uh, summer days. So there's uh, like 10 of these up and then I opened up a pre-order as well. So get it while it lasts because I won't be making more of this once the pre-order closes. Um, and I'm going to close that pre-order sometime next week. I, I, I don't know. There you go. Summer days. This was a whole lot of fun to dye. And uh, I'm going to have to keep one for myself. Okay. So Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece is, for those of you who don't know, Tour de Fleece is a spinning community. It's not a competition because there's, it's not like Spinzilla where there's a goal of, you know, you have to spin so many yards or whatever. It's not like that. It is just the community of spinners that get together and just spin, just spin to spin for fun of it, um, for the love of spinning. So, and that is the reason it's called Tour, Tour de Fleece is because it is based on the schedule and the events of the Tour de France, which is a big bicycle race um, held in France every year, um, which is one of the reasons I did my summer days on Rambouillet, because Rambouillet is French Merino. It's called French Merino. The difference between Rambouillet and regular Merino is it's squishier and it has a longer staple length. So, um, but it's called French Merino. A lot of people call it that. So I did it on Rambouillet because, um, why not? So that, so Tour de Fleece starts on July 7th. And just like we did in the store here last year, we have a kickoff in the store, kind of like a potluck. And we have a lot of fun uh, of the day because it starts on a Saturday. So we have a potluck here at the store. So if you're local, feel free to join us. All the information's in my Ravelry group. Uh, if you're not local, feel free to join us virtually. I put up a, a post in the Ravelry group to to be part of the spinning team, Team Alma Park, for the tour. And I will be giving prizes away. To be eligible for prizes, uh, this yarn you spin will have to be of the fiber that you purchased here at the store, uh, whether online or in person at Alma Park. Um, but, um, you know, as far as the actual event goes, you know, you could chat in there and do whatever you want, post all that stuff. The prize thread, though, will only be uh, uh, available for fibers spun, yarn spun from fibers here. So uh, I will put the link in the description as well to join the Alma Park team. If you're not familiar with Tour de Fleece, the information uh, of what it's all about and more specifics and the FAQs and all that stuff is also on that uh, thread in my RAV group um, so you can learn more about that but it's fun it's just a community getting together and spinning for the whole you know little over three weeks it goes from July 7th to which is Saturday to July 29th which is a Sunday so you've got a good three weeks you know we can accomplish a lot in three weeks of spinning. Some people set goals for themselves to spin every day, spin 15 minutes a day, uh, spin X amount of ounces of fiber. You could set what any goal, you could set whatever goal you want. It's a personal goal. Um, the My goal for this tour is going to spin a sweater quantity of yarn. And the reason I'm doing that is because I will be having, the store will be having a, and a virtual, it will be virtual as well, a run in our Ravelry group. We're going to have a sweater knit along starting in August. So I would like to spin, I would like to knit myself a sweater from my own hand spun. So I will be hopefully finished <laughs> for, for, you know, it's 22 days of spinning. I think I could do it. I will be spinning a sweater's quantity worth of yarn. Uh, it's a worsted weight and uh, I need about 1,800 yards. Pattern calls for 1,600 for my size, but I want to spin a little extra just in case. Um, and, uh, you know, if I have extra left over, I'll make myself a hat, you know, whatever. Um, so that I can wear my hat with my sweater. Anyway, so um, that's what I'm going to be doing for the tour. So next week, I hope to show you my fiber because I'm going to be making bats um, because it's going to be an alpaca merino silk blend 
um, the sari silk that I just showed you um, and merino and uh, a, a fawn alpaca from a guy called Romeo that's what I'm going to be working on so hopefully I'll have that finished uh, some of it finished for you next week so you can see that I need to get it finished by the 7th because there's no way I'm going to be able to spin it all if I don't have it all prepped before the tour because I get lazy then. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to go make another bat. I just want to spin. So, um, so next time I will show you that. And I've already told you that in August we're going to be doing a spin along, uh, knit along. So hopefully you guys can join me for that. Um, and then next time also my fiber share for my partner is all finished except for one thing I'm waiting for to come in the mail and it should be here tomorrow or Monday and I'm hoping to ship it out on Monday so if I ship it out on Monday I'll be able to next week have it in my podcast and show you what I sent my partner um, I will tape that on Monday before I send it and then next Thursday or Friday when I do my podcast I will show you what I sent her and uh, I'm really excited about it. I think uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, okay, so what else? So I wanted to bring your attention to so a lot of you who spin, I would imagine, get Spin Off and Ply Magazine. So this is Spin Off. Um, I'm sure you have subscriptions to one or either or both. Did I say one or either or both? You know what I mean. One or both. Oh, I have fiber on my nose now. So, I wanted to bring your attention to an article that's in here that I think is very important. Over the years, I have seen indie dyers get blasted for their yarn and or fiber bleeding. So, somebody buys yarn. It's more, more often yarn than uh, fiber I've seen. So, you know, in some indie dyer group, some some customer will post and said that you know they knitted this beautiful insert project here sock shawls whatever and uh when they went to wash it all the color bled out or a lot of the color bled out or it wouldn't stop bleeding or whatever and uh you know it's uh Usually the indie dyer is embarrassed and no matter and and sometimes the indie dyer you know handles the situation well and says that they'll refund or replace um, you know sometimes they get defensive and you know whatever who nobody wants to be attacked on social media in a group um, so there was an article and this is the summer issue of spinoff um, and there was an article that was written by a woman named Kimber Baldwin I don't know her but um, in the article it says she has a PhD in chemistry now if you didn't know I was a chemical engineer before I did this and that's what I went to school for and I advanced I have an advanced degree in chemical engineering and so I found this article very awesome <laughs> because this is stuff I've been saying for years and you know when somebody's bl blasting somebody on social media um, I tend not to get involved because no matter what you say you know it, it's a bad situation um, but this article I think is important for everybody who buys indie dyed yarn or fiber to read because it goes and talks about the pH of water now I've seen some indie dyers who put on their website that you know I have uh, you know rinsed my yarn or fiber till the water runs clear you you have may have different results and a truer statement never Ha more has been said because if I'm here and at my sink and my yarn and or fiber rinses clean then I should not have a problem with it of my own water washing that as a finished project but you m will inevitably have different water and I have well water here so it's a, it's a little uh, it's a little acidic. Um, we've had it tested and everything. It's a little acidic. And, uh, but typically, if you have municipal water, it's pretty close to the pH of seven. Now, if you go read this article, there may be some, something, some technical things in there. And you know, don't get lost in the technicalities of it. Just read it for what it is. And what it is, it says that 
when you wash something, if you have pretty basic water, which is a pH over seven, seven is neutral, under seven is acidic, over seven is basic. If you have basic water and she does, she shows the comparisons, um, some of the dye is going to release from the fiber and bleed. Okay, and um, if, if you look at this and you know, she calls, she calls to, uh, she points out, she says, the exact isoelectric point depends on the type of fiber protein. Isoelectric point is pH. So wool, for instance, has an isoelectric point of approximately, approximately four and a half, which is considered acidic. Okay, seven is uh, neutral. Your stomach can be anywhere from, you know, 3.5 to 4.5. So, you know, it's pretty acidic. You know, stomach acid's acidic. Um, and while the electric, uh, isoelectric point of silk is around five. So, you know, if you're even at seven, which is neutral, you're going to have some bleeding because the water is much higher of a pH than what wool, wool or silk feel comfortable with. So if you, uh, you know, if you get some fiber from an indie dyer and you wash it and it bleeds, don't automatically assume that that indie dyer didn't rinse his or her color properly, okay? Maybe it's your water. Maybe his or her water was slightly acidic and it rinses clean and it's fine for them. Maybe your water's slightly basic and it's not fine for you. Um, most silks are difficult in the red range um, and they're, well, red is a very small molecule, so it, it's difficult for most things. But, um, you know, silks do bleed and you should always wash silks in cool water. Um, you know, soft silk bleeds, these sorry silks bleed. When I dye silk, it typically doesn't bleed, although I did dye some silk oil the other day with a sapphire colorway and uh, yes, it's bleeding. So what am I gonna do? Now, having said that, so you know, bef you know, have your water tested. Go buy pH strips at, um, at Home Depot. And uh, if you see bleeding, you know, just test your water. Co cost a couple bucks, test your water, see if it's basic. If you have very basic water, consider throwing some citric acid or vinegar in your wash water when you wash stuff um, so that you don't get that bleeding. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to set other dyers uh, dye because that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that read this article if you belong, if you have a subscription to Spin Off Magazine because this really is something that um, I've seen happen time and time again and uh, you know if I could save one person the trouble and one indie dyer the embarrassment that'd be good. So um, read the article if you have a subscription to Spin Off. If you don't have a sub description to spin off, borrow somebody that you know, or buy it on the newsstand because I really do think the article is worth it. Or just go to Barnes and Noble and read it while you're standing there. I didn't say that. Okay, so um, one more thing I want to show you in spin off, which I thought was very, very cool. Same article. I mean, uh, same issue. And I didn't even realize this. Now, when I get spin off and ply, I pretty much read it cover to cover. Um, Maybe not like instantly when I get it. I'm a couple of issues behind on some of my uh, some of my ply m m subscription, but um, I read this one because it, you know it's cover to cover because it it just looked interesting and has some alpacas in it and blah blah blah. But what I think is really cool now I read it cover to cover when I when I sit down and read it. But there's patterns in the back, right? So there's this beautiful sweater in the back. And um, it's called the Kuromatsu, Kuromatsu sweater. I probably said that wrong. By Sarah Miller. And it's a very pretty sweater. Now, what I don't do is I don't read the patterns that they have in the back line for line. Because, well, you know, if I definitely was going to knit this sweater, I would probably read through it. But typically when I look at the patterns, I look at the patterns, I earmark them, I dog, dog, you know, dog ear them. Um, don't yell at me for people who, you know, I know there are people who think that's one of their biggest pet peeves. Um, I'll dog ear it if I really think I'm gonna come back and knit it. But typically, 
even if I am going to come back and knit it, I don't necessarily read through the pattern line for line. So one of my customers came in the other day and said, um, congratulations, you made it into the spinoff. And I was like, what? You know, I, what are you talking about? I was like, I, she's like the summer issue. And I'm like, I don't remember being anything in the summer issue. And I knew there were some alpacas in here, but I, I didn't see anything. Well, it turns out that this sweater and the darker stripes in the sweater, okay, are made with my Starry Night bat, my textured bat, which is a black bat. I don't have any in stock or I'd show it to you. Um, it's a black bat with blue and yellow silk noil and some white silk and lots of sparkle. Starry Night, Van Gogh. Um, so, and it, right in the first thing it says materials. Uh, the yarn shop at Alma Park spinning bat, Starry Night. I just thought that was so cool. I don't know. I mean, I've had spin-off and fly subscriptions for years. I don't know. Maybe I'm in some others and just, I never, so now I have to go look at all these, all these uh, patterns and see. I thought that was really cool. And so again, next time we're going to talk about my fiber share that I'm sending. Um, I'm going to hopefully have some of my fiber for you to show you that I'm going to be doing for my Tour de Fleece project. And I know one of uh, the comments on my video last time was people want to see core spinning. And um, so I'm hoping to do a demo of that. I can't promise that next time, but I hope to do that in one of the future episodes this summer in the next couple of weeks. So if there's something that you would like to see, um, please, you know, comment below and uh, subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified when there are new videos up. Okay, so until next time, enjoy your spin. And this was Rose Spins Yarn. Take care. Bye-bye.